Hello friends, it's Julie, and welcome back to Adopted Genealogy. Today I'm going to talk to you about Swedish death cleaning and genealogy. Is there a connection? I think so. So let's talk about it. Um, as I mentioned before, we don't have children. I am the last of the five in the family. So anything that I have, nobody's really going to want when I'm gone, which is, you know, kind of sad to think about, but it, in a way, it's good to know that I'm the final one making the decision. I don't have to wait for um, children or grandchildren to weigh in on it. But I can just make the decision. Do I want to keep this for my memories or am I done with it? Am I okay? And I'm now a few years shy of 50. So there are some things that, and I'm at the point where I can get rid of those childhood things and not need them. And if you haven't heard of Swedish death cleaning, it's basically... It's a wonderful little book, and I'll show a cover here if I can remember, about how this woman in Sweden, and she was, I think, in her 60s or 70s, and she it was time for her to go through her house and uh, sort through it and get ready, get it ready for when she would be gone. So she would discard things, she would sort things, she would label things for people, so it can, the, the, their children were not burdened when she passed, and which is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, kind of morbid in a way but you know it's a reality of life we we don't we don't live forever and i have a lot of stuff uh, we had moved to montana about six years ago our basement still has boxes from the move i have my family's photos and stuff i have reselling stuff i have craft stuff i have crap when we left on a little vacation i've had this thought i hope we don't die <laughs> Because my, if I had my family had to come and sort through it, they would not have good memories of me in the end. <laughs> they would be wondering, what in the world? And then I have lots of photos and ephemera that are for reselling and are not from my family. So I need to, to take care of that. And you never know what's going to happen. You know, even if I don't die, I might be disabled more or who knows you don't know we could have a fire um there's there's been flooding south of us and people only had so few hours to take out their house what they could before their house floated away literally would i be able to find the things i needed so anyways that's my thought with the swedish death cleaning and genealogy so in genealogy, you think a lot about birth and death anyways, so it kind of prepares you a little bit. Now, I had gone downstairs, and my husband and I were sorting through through some things, getting rid of stuff, sorting it out, and I came across two of these boxes. Now, I had gotten, I think, this box when I was in college, and it's and the other one I don't, around the same time, which the other box didn't survive. But they were full of photos, and I had them all divided with these dividers in different subjects. But then I had these two boxes of photos that I hadn't really looked through. So, what, so I basically got rid of most of the photos. And the ones I kept were basically of my husband and I, and some pets I had, my some of my family, my childhood, basically me. And so this is what I kept from the two boxes. It's not full. You can see that I have room back here. And this stack here are photos that I'm going to send to other people. Because I'm the basically the holder of the genealogy of the family and the photos, um, I don't want to be holding on to them all anymore. Uh, I, a few years ago, I went through a bunch of our family photos and I gave them to my family. So what I would do is with this stack of photos, if I wanted to keep one, I would scan a copy. So here are three gentlemen there and three, two of them for sure are relatives. So I would pick whichever one was prominent in there and put them and give that to them. Um, and if I had doubles, they would both get one. So that's how I sorted them out. I gave them all envelopes and whatever they did with them after that was up to them. Now, if the really old photos, the, um, ancestors, that's a whole di different story. But these modern ones that are from our lifetime, these, that's what I did. And there are actually some of these, uh, that are from, I have some from my college roommate of her and her mom when they visited and her mom has passed away, so I'm sending her those. So basically, I'm distributing these photos to the people that are in them or who would have memory with them. When I give them to them, I will let them know that they don't have to keep them if they don't want to, but here they are if they do. 
because I don't want to burden them with more things if they don't want them because just because I'm cleaning them out doesn't mean somebody else wants them. And that's another thing with cleaning things out. So that, um, and I will be going back to my home state um, this fall. So I will be able to distribute those. But what is left in here? Not much. It's not even very enough to um, keep these upright. That's about it. I know that as I go through things downstairs, I will find much more photos. So there's room. I'm going to limit myself to no more than this box. I'm using the container method that once this box is filled up, I have to decide because really I haven't looked at these photos for a long time. Here's me as a little girl. I'm always told I used to be really cute. That's what people would say to me when I was a teenager. You used to be cute. Thanks. And another thing that the lady who did the Swedish death cleaning did was she had a note on there that you can discard these photos at my death because no, you know, no, unless I want them, but they're feel, feel free to throw them away because it was only retained for her memories. And that is a beautiful thing that you release your children from the burden of having to keep things that mean nothing to them, but meant something to you. So uh, that's some, some things to think about. And you know, it's kind of a morbid, you know, video, but it's something we all have to deal with at some point, or you don't deal with it and your family has to deal with it. So I'm making a tiny bit of progress through this. Uh, hopefully I'll get through more and I will update you along on the journey. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think and if you've done this or how you handle your photos. And I hope you have a joyful day. Goodbye.